Okay, it is Sunday night. It's coming up to 9 p.m. Uh, London time. I'm actually uh, joined by Tim, one of our senior traders over in Dublin. How's it going, Tim? Really good. Good stuff. Excited for, for tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, so the the Amplifier Live kind of Discord room that we have has been pretty busy uh, the last couple of hours. There's been a lot of conversation um, about SLV, silver, uh, and the kind of Wall Street bets continuation and, and what could be next and so on. So, Tim, why don't you just get us up to speed? What's the chatter at the moment? Sure. Well, this really started last uh, Sunday, last Saturday, Sunday. Um, I'm a member of the Wall Street Fest board on Reddit, just really for skulking purposes and information gathering purposes, if anything. So uh, they were they were sending out to hit GameStop. And as we saw that come true through Wednesday or Monday, all the way through Thursday, and then really a lot of that shut down the fact happening on Robin Hood and it's now sort of SEC investigation territory. However, in the mix of conversation on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, last week on the boards, there was a sort of a, uh, an op-ed put out by the leader of the swarm, if you like, who was called the chairman. And he had this sort of op-ed about shorting silver, SLV. Uh, or via the, by using SLV, which is the BlackRock iShares ETF uh, silver tracker. So um, it was a pretty convincing argument and it's been picked up by a lot of people uh, as the world focused in on GameStop, on Wall Street bets, really from what happened to go to GameStop and AMC from kind of choose Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And so people really are picking up on what they're talking about, but they've also stumbled across this op-ed on SLV. Now I did talk about this Monday morning and we did a little video and, and um, Eddie recorded something on GameStop, but I've been tracking this SLV. And for me, as uh, sort of someone who's tracking what these guys are up to, um, I thought, okay, it's one thing to move an equity you know, like GameStop or AMC, and there's a lot of games being played on the book there. You know, I, I shared a video in our room uh, earlier on today where Kramer um, from CNBC is talking about his good old days managing a hedge fund and all of the sort of games they used to play with driving, driving equity prices up, fading them down, rebuying them and putting out news and fake news. And it's a pretty eye-opening video, so do try and check that out on our on our Discord if you can. Um, but really, coming back to the point of why we're talking now um, is that Thursday last week I thought, okay, it's one thing to move equities; it's another thing to move a global commodity market. And I thought, you know what? I like I like what these guys are doing. I think they're pretty crazy. Uh, Michael Burry, who's as, who's famous from the Big Short, uh, famously shorted the mortgage uh, market. Um, he's actually been in uh, that trade with Wall Street Bets uh, as of I think middle of last year. So he was buying about seventeen million dollars worth of GameStop stock at around two dollars, and so you can kind of imagine the gains he's on. But there are sophisticated traders in this group and they do know what they're doing. So they're not to be discounted. Anyway, came Thursday and on the Reddit boards, they were solely focused on managing the GameStop position by not liquidating, i.e. not putting any of their shares out for loan to short or nothing, anything like that. But then they switched focus to SLV and the chairman started juicing the war cry, right? And... <laughs> And you know what? These guys respond to it. Now there was a there was a, a quick calculation done by uh, some people I follow on on uh, on Twitter, and they calculated that the approximate buying power of the swarm, we'll call them now, Wall Street bets, is about 1.4 billion. Um, so these guys are not to be trifled with. So, sure enough, Thursday open on the metals exchanges, silver futures. Uh, opened up uh, just a little tepid to start with, but then SLV started getting hit. Now, the important thing to realize is that uh, an ETF like SLV 
its 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 net asset value is derived by the the futures price and the spot price of silver. So, like with the oil ETF, uh, I think it's USO. They uh, their net asset value, i.e., the price of US oil, is directly and mathemat mathematically correlated to the price of the spot price of a barrel of oil and uh, a mixture of the front month future and the second front month future, i.e., basically the first two to three months of all the prices of oil available. And with SLV, their net asset value is pegged to very simple, something very similar in terms of the silver market. Why is this important? It, it's important because once Wall Street bets started to lift, i.e. buy a lot of SLV, well, SLV asset managers and portfolio managers had to then, to offset their risk, take positions in the actual futures market for silver, the SIE contract. And this sort of sort of started this self-fulfilling prophecy in a way, right? You know, so they're they're buying the ETF, then the ETF have to also offset their risk and commit to their new clients by buying more futures, and then more futures rising, the ETF rises. And so in a way, this is important to remember because we saw the inverse of this happen in January 2018 when we had um, an incident called Volmageddon, where whereby the the VIX, I won't get too into this, but essentially the VIX went so high in, in February, Jan, Feb 2018, that the portfolio managers who were hedged on their long equities positions were short in VIX. And the, the pain on their short side and the VIX trade got so uh, high that they contractually had a puke point of 80% volatility in their, in their short side portfolio that they had to stop, they had to stop selling VIX futures. So what happens when you take the roof off something? Well, it, it bounces high. Higher VIX, equities go down. So what we're seeing essentially is the inverse of this now happening with uh, the SLV ETF. And as a consequence, we, this trade has now gotten a lot of air since last Sunday, Monday, Coming into Friday, we've seen record inflows into the SLV ETF. Uh, so huge amounts of, of, of retail and institutional money stepping in there. And essentially that is having a knock on effect. So something I was looking forward to a peaceful Sunday, but I, I quickly got sucked into some crypto stuff, uh, the Stellar coin, which I'm an owner of. So it was like opened about 10% up. So my friends who I traded some crypto with were on to me. Then I saw people, uh, Nicola Duke, who I follow on Twitter, who's, who's a, a fantastic trader. She was monitoring that the Tel Aviv exchange, which is open on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, their gold um, ETF tracker was up 5%. I checked back on it about lunchtime. It was up 6.5%. Right. Uh, so, it, you know, uh, so... We're looking forward to a pretty wild week in the metals complex. Yeah, so the, there's there's quite a few articles, as you said. It seems like this is building up a bit of traction, and yeah. uh, Bloomberg are reporting silver coin sites have grinded to a halt. And Zero Hedge, yeah, obviously those in the market will know Zero Hedge very well. They're obviously coming into their element with these types of narratives at the moment, and they were talking about the same sort of thing. Um, so what's the deal on the physical side? How does that play into this? Sure, yeah. So, the, I mean, one of, the, one of the things about Wall Street Bets and the Swarm is that they, they are very specific about um, execution instructions, as in, okay, how do we get into this trade, right? And, and, and there are some guys in there who say, oh, we'll play the options, we'll buy the outright, we'll buy the physical. Um, you know, that's the same with a lot of these trades. They, they talk about, well, will I, am I better off on options? Am I better off uh, on just buying outright? Do I need to hedge this? And what we're seeing uh, out of the chairman was he was just like, you know what? We want to accumulate so much um, that there is, none there, are, there is no available stock to, to short, to borrow, to short. Because if you want to short an equity, or, or a futures contract, 
mechanically in the background, you, you are actually borrowing that contract from someone who is long or an owner of the underlying asset to then um, try and hold it to, until the, the, the premium goes out of that price. So they're buying a lot of bullion. So we've seen just before I came on this chat, um, there, we had Walmart's uh, site down, they sell silver. Uh, a lot of these like literally, you know, buy coins, uh, buy like silver crew grounds, stuff like that. I know like on the elite trader team for best uh, trade of the month, uh, they win a silver crew grand, which is about 26, 26 quid. Well, I think that's going to be worth a little bit more by the end of the week. So um, I don't know. I don't know if my prize giving is going to continue a crew grand. <laughs> but, the, but the main point is, is that uh, everyone is buying ETFs. I called my aunt earlier on who does trade. Uh, she's traded for 20 years, 30 years. And uh, I said, you know, are you looking at silver? And she's like, Oh, I've been so long silver for a couple of months now and I just rebought. And I was like, all right, well, I'm late in this one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it's, it's a well aired trade right now. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit coming off on the open, maybe a gap open, gap fill on a pullback. And then maybe it, that'll be a dip and drive. Um, you know, I have orders in a 25 as well myself. Um, full disclosure, I am long uh, a miner that you all know about um so it it's going to be wild it's going to be wild because these guys if there is no open float to short there therefore the price will literally just have to drift drift up until it finds an offer and uh, on bloomberg you know i mean on bloomberg at the moment they just released an article saying from one of the, one of the largest traders of silver and he's just saying there are no offers in the market i.e there are no sellers, so therefore there's nothing to stop price as it goes. Right. So here I've got got the article here is uh, the vice the VP of Zan, Zania Group in Chicago. Yeah. Quote: Now we're seeing nothing, no single offer, which is scary. That's what he said yeah. earlier. So mechanically, what happens in a market if there are no, if there is, if there's, if there's very little to no liquidity, if there's zero liquidity, the market actually cannot move up. If there is light liquidity, the market will move up to where that liquidity is. That could be a jump of a, a basis point, five basis points, 50 basis points. And this is when you see these really fast moves because effectively the mechanics are, and the order dynamics going on in the exchange are that price is discovering essentially higher until it wipes, until, until everyone's happy that they're long. And so it's going to be interesting to see. One more point I want to mention just before we wrap up on this is that the ratio of available physical civil silver for delivery versus the number of contracts traded is 250 to one. So for every one unit of silver physically available to deliver, there are 250 contracts traded on that one contract available. So something's going to give and something's going to snap this week. Yeah, I mean, just, just to finish as well, your, your take on, I'm, I'm just watching our own private Discord room and they're talking about, there's a lot of chat on Twitter pointing out that the silver squeeze is not being mentioned on Reddit, Wall Street bets, but rather it, it could be instigated by hedge funds, basically, to lure the hordes away from GME stock. Any thoughts on that? I think that makes a lot of sense, absolutely. But this is sort of a situation now where it has become a self-fulfilling lie, if you like, or you know, if if this is interference being run by hedge funds, well, you know what? They've got everyone's attention and they've got the liquidity. The market has moved liquidity into this ETF. I don't think. Well, look, what, let's see how it opens. Let's see how it opens. I, d I don't think silver is really a bad buy around 25, anywhere from 22 to 25 dollars. I don't think it's a bad buy on, you know, on, on the futures market. SLV trading 24.99, what I'm looking at right now. Um, actually, it's trading, sorry, right now, pre-market is trading 27. Um, so it's up 1.09% pre-market right now, actually, from 
nicey. So whether it's whether it's Wall Street bets driving it or whether it's hedge funds, we're up one point one percent. Yeah, pre market. Cool. Well, look, we'll end it there. I know you've got a couple of hours ahead of you now. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll catch you later on. See you bright and early. Thanks very much, Tim. Cheers, man. Any questions, any comments, let us know below. Thanks very much. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye.